Now friends, let's talk about this problem that is question number 46. So let's read the problem. If k is less than n by 2, where k comma n belongs to n, natural number, then n c 2 k is equal to what? Assuming p c q is equal to 0, p is less than q. Solution if we talk. Now this has been given n c 2 k. So if we talk about n c 2 k, now how n c 2 k can be created you see? This is going to be coefficient of x to the power k in the expansion of 1 plus root x raised to the power n, right? This is how we can go about. And this is nothing but we have coefficient of x to the power k in we have 2 plus root x minus 1 raised to the power n. So we have to bring lot many things in this case, see. Okay. So this is nothing but because you can see we can take this term as one term, then we have the other one is 2. So, x plus y form we can take and this is going to be coefficient of, we can write it in this way, x to the power k in summation form also. So, how to write the summation form in this case, see r is equal to 0 to n we can write and this is ncr, right. Now, if we take ncr, this is going to be how much? This is going to be root x minus 1, okay, raised to the power r we have. Then we have 2 raised to the power n minus r. You got it? This is how we can write. Fine. Same way, next part is like what can be the term if we talk about the coefficient part. So this is going to be r is equal to 0 to n minus 1 raised to the power r, right? And we have 2k, fine. And if you see here, we have ncr being given to us. Then we have r c 2 k right and we have 2 raised to the power n minus r friends. So this is one part same way we can go for 1 plus root x also raised to the power n to get check for the other options. We can write it as 3 plus root x minus 2 raised to the power n. Now we can proceed further same way got it. So if you see here. B and C options is the correct one, right? This is what we have in this case. Now friends, let's talk about a very interesting problem that is uh, question number 47. So there is a combined equation of sides of a triangle. That is we have to create a triangle whose combined equation being given to you. That is x plus y minus 12, x square minus 6xy plus y square is equal to 0 we have. Let me write the equations first of all. And that will help us to do all those calculations, right? So we have one is this, and the other one is what? We have x square minus 6xy, and then we have plus y square is equal to 0 beta. Okay? See, you have the axis, the coordinate axis in this case, right? Then we have the origin part. These are the two lines we have and this is y and this is x, okay? This is how we can write it down, isn't it? Now, there is one more line which is somewhat like this is the line I am talking about. So what is the line we have? We have this line, which one? x plus y minus 12. So this is the line 1 we have, right? This is the line 1 and it is representing second equation that is the you know if we take equation number 1 this is equation number 2 this is representing the pair of lines passing through the origin. Now friends uh, this is nothing but we have A and this is B we have right. Now we have the angle here so this is the angle let me take so this is going to be 2 theta okay. Now the next part is how to create the in center because the first thing is you have to find the in center now. So if I talk about the in center part, how to go about this part? See in center will be lying always, this is this is the, the bisector, the angle bisector I am talking about, right? Now I always lie here, right? This always lies on the line y is equal to x. So line y is equal to x is this. So ultimately if you solve this equation and line y is equal to x, we get this to be 6 comma 6, you got it. 
Now this is the perpendicular, again we can have one more perpendicular here, then we have one more perpendicular here, can you see that? This is what you have, right? Now this is 90 degree, this is theta we have, okay, this is the in radius we have, right? This is the in radius we are having. Now I suppose that things are clear now because uh, this is the line y is equal to x, so we can find the value of you know the in center also. So how to get that value? So it is a very interesting calculation, let us have a look at it because other things can, will come out once you know the formulas, but how to get that in center that is the interesting thing. So how can you do it? See if we talk about the in center part, I can be taken as you know this is nothing but we have alpha comma alpha suppose right, this is alpha comma alpha we can take is not it. And if you have this part, say let me take this as, this as 6, okay. Now again, if we, you know, drop a line from here also, same thing, this is going to be how much? This is going to be x is equal to alpha. Can you see that? This is going to be x is equal to alpha in this case, right. Now if it is alpha, then another thing is like, or a dash suppose, right. So what I can take? I can take this i a dash is equal to alpha, right. Then I can take o a dash is equal to alpha. So we need that o i also because we have to create that right angle triangle. So if we talk about the right angle triangle, so how to go about this right angle triangle? Let us have a look at this part. See I have this one, this is the triangle, right angle triangle I am talking about, just see, okay and this is what we have and this is going to be i and this is a dash, right and this is the origin we have, right, okay. Now if I take this as d suppose, so od is 6 minus 0 because it is the distance between the point 6 comma 6 and 0 comma 0. So this is going to be 6 square plus 6 square, right and this is nothing but we have 6 root 2 friends. What is oi then? oi is going to be because this is r. So that means we are talking about 6 root 2 minus r. You got it? We are having 6 root 2 minus r, right? Now, if we use the Pythagoras theorem here, so this is going to be how much? This is going to be alpha square plus alpha square and this is 6 root 2 minus r whole square we have, is not it? This is what we are going to have. So that means we are talking about 2 alpha square and this is nothing but we have 6 root 2 minus r whole square students, right? And then we have alpha to be 6 minus r upon root 2, is not it? This is what we have. So that means if we talk about the first in center, the in center is always going to be what? This is going to be 6 minus r upon root 2 comma 6 minus r upon. This is the calculation, it is a very interesting calculation and I have just given you a flow how to go about this part, right. Now you see this in center we got, now we have the other things also. The other thing is like we have to find the area of the in circle. So if you have the area of the in circle we need few things now, okay. Area of the in circle means I am talking about this circle, the whole circle, right if the in circle I am talking about, so I am talking about this circle, right? This is the in circle. So we know what is 10 theta. So in this case it is 10 to theta. So this is nothing but twice of s square minus ab upon a plus b, right? This is what you have. So this is the form, 10 to theta can be found out. So if you talk about 10 to theta, what is 10 to theta? This is going to be always 2 root 2 beta. This is 10 to theta we have, right? Now need sin theta also, sin theta is going to be from 2 root 10 to theta, we can find sin theta, sin theta is going to be 1 upon root 3. So from here r can be found out, how r can be found out, see. We have been given the diagram here, so this is the theta part, right, this is the theta part we have and here also we have r, got it. So oi has been given and we have r also got it and sin theta is what then? We have r upon what? We have 6 root 2 minus r, right? This is what we have already found, isn't it? 
So, uh, 6 root 2 minus r because this is the length. So, this is the r. So, from here we can find r, right. So, we can find the r here, okay. From here r can be found out that is 6 root 2 divided by we have root 3 plus 1, right. Now, from here we have a relation for cos 2 theta plus cos 90 minus theta, right, plus cos 90 minus theta is equal to we have 1 plus r upon r. So, from here also we can get the ratio of the in radius and the circum radius. Now, cos 2 theta cos 90 minus theta cos 90 minus theta we will get it from the diagram in this case, you got it. So, I think all the things being covered here, you can just using this diagram, you can solve it, right, fine. So, if you see all the parameters being solved and you can just apply the formulas, the area formula, perimeter of the triangle is very simple. If you know the sides, you can find it out. So, ultimately, if you see, we will have A C D, A C D to be the correct answer. Now, let us talk about this problem, the 48 question. You have been given f x is uh, greatest integer function x upon x and we have x belonging to r minus 0, g x has been given to you as greatest integer function of x for all x belongs to r. We have to define a function h x where g of f x is there and x is not equal to 0, 0 if x is equal to 0. The composition of function is the important component in this particular question. If we just find out g of f x, things can be you know found out, not a problem at all, right. We have to first of all find g of f x. So, how to get that g of f x in this case, right. So, that means I am talking about g of f of x. So, g of what is f x? f x is this part. First of all, let's, let me take this one then we have to get the whole thing within the greatest integer part, right. This is what we have to take. Then you have to go for the next part that is f of g x that is also needed, right. So, this is going to be how much f of g x, g x is what greatest integer x, right fine and we can just see here this is something like we have this because this double greatest integer sign has been given so we can write it singly only not a problem right and also in place of x we have written this part so this is going to be one i think things are clear to you now if we talk about hx to be continuous at x equal to 0 so let's go for h 0 minus okay then we go for h 0 plus, then we have h 1 minus, then we have h 1 plus, right. So, these are the things we can have. For 0 minus, yes, 0 minus means within the greatest integer function, 0 minus means minus 1 and 0 minus means we are talking about this to be infinite, okay. And if we talk about 0 plus, this is always going to be 0. 1 minus is 1 and if you talk about 1 plus, this is going to be what? This is going to be 0 in this case, right. So, that means if you see here, these are all discontinuous at x is equal to 0 and 1. So, this is the B option is the correct one, that is fine. Let us go for the next part. If we just talk about the next limiting value, f of g x, right, f of g x is equal to 1. Here, Yes, this is also true because if you take the limiting value of this, this is also going to be the same answer, right. Now, if you just uh, see here, these are the options we have B and D is the correct one, right. 